uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. If you have not seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, uh, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this show is not about law. The show has always been about my friends Frank and Mary, who you see. Uh, and their goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house till they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And if they're Frank and Mary in Ashland, they want to be right here and they don't want to leave. And this is Frank and Mary, the COVID-19 version. So Frank and Mary are kind of stuck in their house wearing the little mask and, and being kind of, you know, stressed out and bored at the same time. Um, and so the question is, who do they need to know? What do they need to know about what's going on? So as if you've seen the show before, you know my wonderful co-host, whom I som somehow co-opted into doing the show, is Steve Mitchell, your selectman. Uh, and Steve always finds all these great people that people really need to know, whom people really need to know. And Steve, you've got a, a great guest who has now become an important player or in, in this whole um, uh, COVID-19 story here in Ashland. So. Uh, who have we got? Well, always a pleasure uh, seeing you and doing this show, uh, Art. So, uh, and I just wanted to uh, send out best wishes to all the residents that do watch our show and hope everybody is safe and healthy and practicing uh, uh, good social distancing. Uh, but today our guest is Sergeant Ed Berman. Ed Berman is from the, our police department. Uh, and uh, he was recently appointed to head the our COVID-19 task force. And I will let Ed at this point explain what that means. And then we can just get into uh, just a, a conversation about, uh, about what's going on. So Ed, uh, welcome to the Frank and Mary show. And uh, so if you can give us a little uh, update on your position and, and you know, what's been going on thus far. Yeah, so uh, obviously, uh as a town, you know, we need to be on top of um, what's going on with the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and I think one of the visions of the town manager was to kind of have that one person that's kind of overseeing all the things that we as a town are doing. Um, so last week, last Monday was, believe it or not, my first day in this. So um, I was trying to make some sense of everything that was going on. And there's so many moving parts to this. Um, one thing is, is for example, when one of our residents gets tested, um, the state has a system called MAVEN that notifies us that we have somebody that's had a positive test. Um, at that point, we need to assign one of our nurses to kind of follow up on that case to find out, number one, how you're doing. Uh, number two, then to reach out to find out who you may have been in contact with that you potentially exposed to give you quarantine guidelines. And then that same nurse is gonna do another follow-up call with you in seven days, again, to see how you're doing and whether we can release you from your quarantine state or do we need to continually follow up with you up to the next, up for potentially 14 days. Um, that's one part of it. Um, the other part of it is making sure that all of our first responders and town employees have the proper PPE equipment, the protective equipment in the event they need to come into your house. So for example, um, are, you have a water problem in your house and you potentially could be positive or quarantined uh, with coronavirus, then we need to make sure our DPW worker that's coming into your house has the proper protective equipment. Um, and again, maintaining all those supplies. Um, there's state reporting that needs to be done on a daily basis. Um, we need to make sure that we're giving the correct numbers to the state and vice versa. We need to make sure we're giving our residents the proper data on our website. So I've been working with um, Beth Reynolds and Ashley Place to make sure that you have the most accurate data on our website. Um, obviously, different boards I've been reporting to all, also. Um, working with, um, we've had residents that have contacted me that they need a mask. So I have masks for people if they need them. Um, um, making sure, um, for, I'll give you a good example, something I've been working on today. Um, we've had some people that have been tested positive that we've been unable to reach. 
whether the phone number they gave their lab is incorrect or whatever. So we're in the process of sending those people letters so that they can reach out to us to give us the proper phone number so we can have one of our public health nurses um, reach out. I've also been working to build a team to people of me to help me. Um, so for example, all of our school nurses are on board. They're helping us on a daily basis, different things like that. That's great. So Ed, let's talk about testing uh, a little bit now. You know, we're, we're all hearing about the need for, for more and more testing and then the contact tracing uh, based on that. Uh, what are you finding or what information do you have in terms of expanded testing and when, when can we expect that? And uh, uh, it seems to be so critical for moving forward and relaxing all of the restrictions that we now have in place. So, um, so uh, there's a couple of different things that are happening there. Obviously, uh, our first responders obviously get a priority in the event they potentially have been exposed, um, you know, because we need to keep them working. If possible, our police firefighters need to keep them working. Um, the, one of the things that we have noticed is that definitely testing has increased and we are averaging, on average in Ashland, we're averaging about three to four new cases a day that, that we're getting from the labs. But one of the other things that we're seeing is that some of the primary care physicians, so for example, you know, let's say you have a cough and you call your primary care, he may just say to you, you know what, I'm just going to deem you positive and I want you to quarantine yourself for seven to 10 days, call me if you get worse, never getting tested, so we don't even know about those people. But the physician themselves are following up with their own patient. Um, so there are some of those that are happening also that we don't even know about. But on average, I would say we're getting between three and four new cases a day. We're either assigning that case to one of our nurses um, but if our nurses are, have too much on their plate, we're using the contact tracing collaborative that the state has um, started through the um, public health, which has been very helpful for us too. Very good. So another Steve, question. Steve, now. excuse me, can I, can I just yes, ask one you question? Let me just ask a question, Art, before, because it kind of ties oh, in together, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so Ed, you know, the, this show is oriented towards uh, the senior demographic. And what are we doing specifically for, for our senior population in terms of, let's say, wellness checks and, uh, and th those kinds of proactive uh, opportunities? Yeah. So um, one of the things that our people at our community center have done, Jen Wolfing and Kara Terrell, <laughs> they've done a great job making sure that people are contacting them. They've come up with a phone group in the event somebody wants a phone call but they're making sure that food's on the way, you know, um, increasing the amount of people for Meals on Wheels if they feel uncomfortable leaving their house, different things like that. The food pantry, um, setting up a better routine for people to get food. Um, in the event somebody can't get out, can't get food, we'll make sure we get them food. Um, they just have to be in contact with Kara or with Jen Wolfing. Um, the other thing, like for example, you know, Obviously, town halls right next to 119 Main Street. I've had a few of the residents there reach out to me because they've wanted me to help them get a mask. And again, I've got plenty of masks if people need them, um, especially if they feel they need to go out to go to the grocery store and different things like that. Very good, Art. No, I was just I was just uh, thinking about one of the comments that you had just made, Sergeant, and, and you had talked about folks that at least you've already found it from through experience that some folks have actually talked to their doctor because they had real problems. The doctor has said, stay home, but hasn't had them get a test. Why, why would a doctor do that? I, I was just, I was just curious. And, and, and do you find that that is, you know, kind of a one-off thing or have you heard that often? Um, I've actually heard that often. It's, it's those people that have very mild symptoms and I think some of the people, so let, let's throw this out there. So, you know, let's say um, someone's got a very mild cough. Um, I think the doctor feels, you know, most likely they're negative if I send them for a test. But, and then again, that what I think the way they're thinking of this is, 
all right, well, you know what? They've got a mild cough. I'm just going to tell them that they're positive. No one's going out anyway. I'm going to have them stay home. I'm going to have them stay in touch with me. If they get worse, then I'll send them for a test. I think the potential to send them to a testing site and actually get exposed. So I think some physicians are just feeling that I'm better off having them stay home at this point and I'll monitor their symptoms. I see. It, it must be, that, that's a, it must be a really difficult trade because on the, on the flip side, especially for people who are, well, they, you always talk, hear about these asymptomatic people who are carriers. Exactly. Who got minor, minor symptoms. And if they haven't told anybody, you know, it's, that, that could be a problem. Now, that just relates to us kind of a second question I had. You know, it was, it, it, you, would, you related to something you had mentioned earlier that you obviously want to make sure when someone's going to a house so that they've got the right equipment all the time, right? Yep. To make sure that there's a problem. So if they are going in general, if there is a water problem or a sewer problem, right? Or, you know, as well as a police problem or a fire problem, are the, are the responders, the public responders, just presuming that there may be an issue and therefore dressing accordingly to make sure that the things are safe? So, or, so, that's, a, that, so that's actually a two-part question. So yeah. um, yes, so they're, they're just assuming we're using standard precautions on everybody, but the state does allow us every day, we, we are allowed under the current law to release the addresses of where we've had a positive case to police and fire, but it's ah, only an address. So, but again, we are just teaching everybody, you know what, let's just assume everybody and we're gonna use standard precautions like we do almost on every medical call that we go on anyway. So right. question Ed, about uh, the state started up, re I believe recently, and, and if I'm not mistaken, they updated every Monday, kind of a dashboard, a COVID-19 dashboard that gives all of the statistics as of Monday. And I believe the current one is as, as of Monday the 20th and so on. Uh, you know, any, any comments on that? And, and I ask you the question because it's related also to, I think the fact that, uh, there is so much uh, COVID-19 activity in rest homes and in retirement communities and so on with that most uh, vulnerable po population. So if you can talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so, so the state's actually releasing data now every day. Um, and I, I'm looking at our data on a daily basis. So for example, um, as of yesterday at uh, one o'clock, we had 83 confirmed cases in town. And out of that 83 though, so far, we've been able to clear 44 of them. So 44 people have either were confirmed and we've gone through the process and we've cleared them through our public health nurses. Um, but we know that that number is actually higher. Right, because we know of the people that aren't getting tested or just think they have a mild cough or may have been exposed and are positive and have no symptoms at all, right? So we know that that number is higher. Right. Um, the state, when they report on the nursing homes, the way they report is this, which is very interesting. The way they report this is they either have less than 10 cases, they report less than 10, they report 10 to 30, or greater than 30. The other caveat in that number is they also include staff in that number. So what's interesting, and, and let me explain to you the way Maven works. Maven works, so, let me give you an example, Steve. So Steve, you live in Ashland. If you go and get tested because you have symptoms, let's say you get tested today and let's say you go to a, a site that has 24 hour turnaround time on that lab test. That means the next day, I'm gonna get notified through the MAVEN system along with our public health nurses that there's a new positive case in Ashland. And then we're gonna initiate that follow-up with you. Now, 
let's say, um, for example, um, I'll use this as an example. Let's say we have a resident that lives in one of our nursing homes, okay? For example, they live in one of our nursing homes, but let's say the family for that person lives in Holliston and they still use that Holliston address for that person, when that person goes and gets tested, Holliston gets notified. So then they have to backtrack it to get it to us. So there might be a little bit of an extra day or two delay before we see that record come through to Ashland. There's a lot of moving parts to it. Sure, sure is. So in terms of you know what to anticipate uh, for when I say the future, I think the future right now is very short term. Uh, you know, Boy, very difficult. Right, very difficult to to talk about a year from now. So you know, just from what you've learned, uh, Ed, over the last uh, you know since you've been on the job, uh, a week and a half. <laughs> what do you think the future is going to the short term future is going to look like in terms of social distancing and relaxations and so on? So, you know, I really think, you know, at some point things are going to have to start opening up. Let's, let's face it. Um, I think personally, in my opinion, I think you're going to see things start to open up, but with new um, ideas. Um, for example, I think when you start to see restaurants open up, I think you'll probably see something like um, to open up, they're going to have to reduce their seating capacity by 50% you know, to kind of spread the tables out a little bit more. I think you will see some kind of mask protocol where if you're going into a store like Home Depot, you know, you know, Target, they're going to have mask requirements when you come in to help prevent if you sneeze or whatever, if you are positive and might not even know it. Um, so I think, I think initially, I think that's going to be our new normal. I think we're still waiting to see more on some of these areas that are starting to open up now what what's happening and then again you have you have some people saying that even if we get this down to a low number what's gonna what does next what does the next six months show us um but then you you hope for that silver bullet right you hope there is either they're able to fast track a vaccine and get people vaccinated, right? Or do we come out with an actual treatment? Is there an actual medication that can be developed? If so, if you develop COVID, you get this medication like an antibiotic and three or four days later, you're better. I don't sure. know. I think we, we have so much unknown right now with this. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. There's so much unknown. And I think, unfortunately, there there's so, so much... Uh, there's so much discussion out there from, from the non-scientists and from the, the political world that uh, I think it becomes very confusing and, uh, you know, particularly for the, for the senior population as well. So, uh, yeah, and I uh, think, Sajid, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I, was, I was so glad that Steve was willing to do this series of shows because I think folks feel a lot more comfortable a lot of times with people with you. Or with or with Steve with, with with local folks as opposed to all of this, this you know it's like it's like an info an info virus you know that's just there's all this flood of information from just everywhere. Now can 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 I ask from from your perspective is there anything? Once again, I'm thinking about the folks that to whom this show is really kind of focused, which is a lot of folks who are at home who are seniors, many of whom you know may not may may not be that comfortable even with, you know, the website, you know, going on the internet and checking the website and stuff. So for, for those folks, is there anything in particular that you would recommend that they be, that they be doing or focusing on as so, seniors? So as I think, so I, you know, listen, I, I think, especially for the seniors, it's their own well being that that's what we have to address point blank. So, you know, for example, you know, we know so many of the seniors use our senior center, as their method of socializing and being out of their house. And now a lot of these people are not doing that. So I think they have to utilize the resources that we have in place in Ashland if they're feeling lonely, if, if, they, if they're kind of getting that, listen, even us, you know, there are days I hear something and I go, wow, I'm pretty nervous about that. Um, 
I, I really feel that they, they can't be afraid to reach out, reach out to Jen Wolfing, reach out to Joanne Duffy, reach out to Kara Terrell, people that they might feel comfortable with. They're all answering their phones. You know, even if they just want to talk to someone and just kind of, okay, all right, I feel better. Someone that can put them at ease. And listen, we know, we know for a fact, we know for a fact that a lot of our seniors, um, some of them don't want to go to the food pantry, right? Because they feel there's a stigma there, right? right? We can come up with other solutions if they don't want to come there. We can get food to them if they're short on food, but they've got to reach out. We don't know that they're home alone and concerned unless they reach out to us. Yeah, and that's a challenge. Uh, and it always has been a challenge. And, you know, it's... Uh, you know, one of the one of the uh, I think hopes of having the proactive uh, telephone calls and, and trying to reach out to seniors for wellness checks. I don't know how Marlboro. I know you live in Marlboro, uh, Art, and how they're addressing those kinds of scenarios. But I, you and I are both in that demographic. So I did receive a wellness check from our chief of police uh, last week, and you know, didn't expect it, but it was. You know, I was just so very pleased to receive that phone call. I was going to say, didn't you find how wonderful it was, though, to get that phone call? Because it was just, it's it's because you feel like people are paying attention to you, you know? And I think, Steve, both you and I deal with a lot with folks who are seniors, and they don't, you know, they don't, they don't want to bother anybody. You know, they're at home, they don't want to, and they can't believe that, you know, that they're saying to themselves, oh, my God, I don't want to call the senior center. There's going to be a ton of people calling, you know, they're going to be all stressed out. Whereas, you know, to, to, to your question, the folks in Marlboro, like Joanne Duffy is, is doing in Ashland, one of the biggest things they're doing every day is calling people, you know, they, they've, but, but one of their greatest impediments is folks that may be really isolated because they hadn't gone to the senior center in the past are now even more isolated. So it's a real, and the it's a problem. only way, if you're watching the show, that you can you can beat that is by really by calling the senior center. You know, yeah. and, and, and I want to. I, I know Ed will be having. If, if is is there a number that, that folks should be calling if they're trying to reach you? And then and then I know we've we've always had the the wonderful people at Ashland Cable list the, the phone number for the senior center just to get that information out. Yeah. So we actually have a um, COVID nineteen hotline with the town of Ashland, um, and that's. Um, monitored um, basically anytime the town halls the regular hours um, during the day um, and that is 508-532-7900 and you can call that number for anything COVID related or if you're you can't get somebody at the senior center you need food and someone here will answer that and get your call to the right person That'll either call you back or we'll, we'll definitely follow up. And you can always I'm, I want to think. And if um, no one answers the line, that might just mean they're on the other line. Leave a message, and we do check that voicemail box all the time. Right. And you can also call Town Hall uh, as well. And I would imagine you can also call the police department as well uh, as an option. So, you know, anybody that's watching this show, I would encourage them to. Uh, you know, not hesitate at all with making those phone calls to reach out. Uh, you know, there's plenty, there's, there's a lot of support out there. And, uh, you know, I think Ashland has been terrifically proactive with setting up programs and services. So, Ed, one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, and I should have asked you that right from the beginning, tell us a little bit about your background, because you're not just, uh, you know, a police officer. Yeah. So, um, before I was a police officer, um, I am actually a registered nurse. And I've worked for the last 29 years. I still work there at Metro West Medical Center. Um, so I, I have quite the background, both um, law enforcement and policing. I've done both my entire career. Um, I've been a police officer almost 27 years. Um, so they kind of thought maybe this is the right fit for me in the middle of this, kind of <laughs> handling the public safety side and the, the medical side. Um, so, and again, I, I, I've been an emergency room nurse for the last, um, 15 years, but prior to that, I worked in the operating room and then, I mean, in the recovery room. And, and prior to that, I worked up on the floors. So I've kind of seen it all. 
Yeah, well, this sounds like a great combination. Would you agree, Art? Uh, oh, that's uh, great. I was just going to say, you're just so fortunate to have somebody like that in Ashland and to have that combination of skills that's going right now, right? Because, and, and I'm sure as the, you know, as, the, as, the, as, the, as an emergency room nurse, like you've seen it all, right? And you're seeing, you, you're seeing, you're seeing these kinds of emergencies. Yeah, so that you can sympathize with folks that are going through this, right? And which is, I think, I think that's, that's a big piece of this, is just having somebody that can, that can well, really well, appreciate, you know, every one of your audiences, but especially the, the senior population who are feeling just more vulnerable than anybody because that's, that's the numbers, you know? Other people are getting hit by this, but most of them are seniors. And so they're just really nervous. So it's having that kind of background is terrific. Let me, let me sum it up. Um, no, no, I was going to say, are they paying you extra for that as a reason? Yeah, no. <laughs> you get a bonus because you're the, no? Um, <laughs> you know, let, me, let, me sum, let me sum something up, especially being a nurse. You know, especially being an emergency room nurse. I think I, the, the people that live in Ashland need to think, especially of the people that work here and volunteer here and do everything as part of their family. That's number one. So let, let, me, let me give you an example. You know, if, if you bring a loved one into the hospital, to the emergency room, and let's say your loved one is very sick, the nurse is not only taking care of the patient, we're taking care of the family. And that's what we do here in Ashland. That's, a, that's great a terrific way to, way to phrase it, absolutely. So, that's a great way to summarize it. Yeah. Any other so, questions? How are, we doing? How are we doing with time, Art? A couple minutes. A couple minutes. All right. Well, let's just uh, uh, let's just sum it up with with Ed and just encourage people to uh, to reach out to the town through the COVID nineteen hotline, uh, through the town hall a regular uh, phone number to the police department, and they'll get directed to the right uh, to the right uh, place. Uh, Ed, one last question I have is how, how are our first responders doing? Uh, we're, we're doing good. Think everybody, yeah. yeah, we're doing good. Like everyone, there's those stressful moments, and but I think people yeah. are talking it through. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I check in every single morning at the station, answer anybody's questions, make sure they have all their PPE equipment. I mean, I think that they definitely feel like they're being um, supported. Well, I hope I hope that you are, and I just want to extend best wishes to all of our uh, first responders, our our nurses, certainly uh, our police and fire personnel, uh, and uh, you know just extend best wishes to them and their families. Uh, we're thinking and we care. And it's clear, and it's clear from the both of you that one of the things that's going on in Ashland that everybody realizes you're all in this together, right? We're all in this together, so. It, this has really been a, a wonderful. Thank you very much for taking the time, Sergeant. I know obviously you got a, you got a lot on your plate right now, and thank you, Steve Mitchell. You know for being willing to outreach to these folks and 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 do these shows. I mean, it really, as I say, it's you know with the the point of this show is really for seniors who 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 might not know where where to look for something to be able to get a sense of how to do it. And I think this has been very helpful. Good. So thank you very much, Sergeant. Thank you, Steve Mitchell. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Ed, and. Uh, We'll see you uh, down the road a little way, right? A little, yep. maybe next month. Yep. And, 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 and all you folks, we'll see you on the next installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Ashley in the COVID-19 version. Thank you very much. Right. Be safe. Mm -hmm.